I just press stop when you finished. The next one's going to be great because that's right up my street. I've just, like, just came to today. It's got very cool print. Just up my street because it's all half, half people in the office have read it. Oh, is it? Yeah. How's everyone? Fine. Good? Well, thank you. Yes. Well. Hold on. This, this is. Are you thriving on your 24 days or are you thinking of cutting down to 23? <laughs> 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 Michael, what makes you say that? <laughs> Have you been speaking too much to Edward? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, when you can do it, you do it. Let's hope that it has some benefit. <laughs> All right. So what I was thinking was, because the next book is a no is a nonfiction. Um, I'm gonna. Cho I've chosen that one, and then we'll see for the fiction again. We'll see what um, uh, suggestions. I know that you suggested one, which I think is a very nice possibility. Um, I wonder if. I guess we probably won't do August, right? People aren't here, but and I'm here for only the beginning of July. What I've asked, what I what I think we're going to do is we're going to skip the meeting for May. So you will have time to read the next book um, for mid-June, I think. It's 11th June I want to do because I'm yeah. not here. But that's just us. Mid-June? So I, I don't remember which we did. I'll probably be away that time as well. Also June. Well, we can adjust if most of our group is away. I am just back. Okay. So I don't know if I'm going to be ready to do a session um, that night, but and and I was just thinking that it all, if you all, if everyone agrees, it also only gives three weeks to read the book if we do it on the twentieth. Which um, have you got a book in mind? Or yes, the next book that I'd like to—it's not terribly long. How long is it? Three hundred pages. Very small print. <laughs> well, what are we doing? Well, you know what? Then, then the next thing we'll do is one short story. <laughs> I want to do a river runs through it. We'll do a river runs through. It. Uh, it's called um, Black Swan by uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Right up my street, that book. I didn't know, I didn't know that was the book. That's going to take some thinking about. It is. It's a thinking book. Oh right up my street. It's what? Right up my street. Is it? Half guys in the office have read it. Have they? Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you read it now? No, I, I haven't read it, so I'll be glad to be forced to read it. But right. it's a serious... Well, story. this one is better than the first book that he wrote, which is called Fooled by Randomness, which is, has far too much maths in it than I care for. Um, but this one is a concept, essentially, of the nature of, you know, random occurrences in Black Swan. Well, you'll, you'll read it. You'll see. Um, although, well, you know, he, I think he put one thing out. There are two things that I wanted to look at. We can either look at Black Swan. It is, I do think it's a good, it's an important book to read in general, just for our general knowledge. Um, or we can do Man's Search for Meeting by, by Viktor Frankl. I, I, last time I asked, m most people hadn't read it. S nobody's read it. I haven't heard of it. I'm You've quoted so from it, haven't you? Why don't, yes, I have quoted from it. Why don't we do this then? We can decide now. Okay, we can decide now. Uh, unless Victor's, unless Edward's done you know, several things out there. We can decide now. We can use the three weeks and read Man's Search for Meaning, which is short. It's not a 300-page book. It's a, very, it's a very short book. The first part of the book, I warn you, is not a comfortable read. It's about the camps, the concentration camps. It's not Jewish-themed. He's talking about his life and his experience in the camps, but he is an existent... That's the first part of the book. The second half of the book is his philosophy, and he's an existential therapist. He's an existential um, psychologist, um, which I think every... Everyone should read that book in their life. So, so we can do that and leave Black Swan for another time at one point, or we can just stick with Black Swan and do and search for me. Have longer to do the so then, fun. that's why I'm saying. So, if we're reading Black Swan, I think the twentieth is too short. Uh -huh. I think we should push it to June. Are you away all of June? Are no, you? No, no, no. We just we going to graduation. So it's yeah. that so it's like ma Mazel Tov. Okay, so that's the date. Okay, so let's see if we can adjust. We'll be in touch then, because we're, you know, it's us, so we'll, we'll see if we can um, adjust it for a and better date. the 20th, if it was the other book? Yes. 
So we can we can we can swap. In other words, we can do if you'd like. What we can do is is for summer, read Black Swan, unless you want a non-fiction a fiction for for summer. We can do the summer Black Swan and then pick it up, you know, before Chagim or something, because Chagim are relatively late this year. Does that sound? Or there's no preference. Well, let's talk about it. I guess we could talk about it afterwards. We'll, we'll, we'll st stick around for a bit and talk about it. See what we want to do. Okay. So I wasn't I wasn't sure whether short stories would work for a, for a, a book club discussion. But um, so what what are your initial thoughts about the book? To I think he's a. a a beautiful writer. Oh, he, he has a way with words. Mm. He does. There's a lot of yeah. them, but he does have right. a way with them, mm. with words. Um, some of the stories I find easier than others, yeah. but he, he thinks a lot and mm. he takes account of nature I mm. think, quite a lot. Mm. And, and he sought to find the good in everyone. Mm. That's nice. I found every, mm. everything had mm. a very positive outlook mm. and usually mm. a positive ending. And yet he'll go to dark places. Absolutely. You know, many of the stories are not afraid to touch on some, you know, painful, dark, dif difficult. Uh, yeah, but that's inter that's an interesting point that he he does he sees the humanity. Uh, in it. Do you feel as though he's a man who's experienced a lot in life? Mm. So he's obviously very observant as to, or very sensitive as to what is important. Mm. It's interesting because he was born after World War Two. And he I describes so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he thought he was old. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I found it a bit disconcerting. Mm. That we didn't always know which period he was talking about mm. until well into the story. Story. Mm. Yeah. And I was kept thinking, which war is he talking about? <laughs> which period? Is I, had he about? Yeah, yes. I had the same experience. Yeah, I had the same experience. I wonder whether he's really convinced of the virtues of humanity in the way you say, or mm. rather that he likes to write about honor, and so that the central character in each story very frequently is someone to whom honor is enormously important mm. and, and how they manifest their relation mm. to it in yeah. different ways in different v circumstances. Well, an, an interesting point because I was thinking, you know, are there do you find a theme through these these very different stories? I mean, they're very different stories, yeah. at least in terms of the thing. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's, it, dawn, it, you know, it dawned on me that if, if I were to choose one, it would probably be honor. You know, this is a very serious thing for him. You know, you read the story about the uh, the, the twin towers. You know, yeah. this woman, yeah. 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 and it's and it's all about the yeah. honor. Yeah. You know, and, and then there's this this wash. Yeah. You know, this 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 English actor. You know, that oh, what's yes. her, what's well, Balbion? Yes. You know, yeah. the, the, the and it's all in the, in <laughs> the square. Yeah. 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 Well, that's yes. a, yeah. The story when I, when I, I read, good, it, he it seemed to start with something and abandon it. The two Rabbanim. <laughs> you know, I said no Jewish, uh, but there's a couple in here. That the ermine yeah. talking to the mink. Mm -hmm. It was so important that one was ermine and the other mink. <laughs> and he thought he can at last talk to the mink. And then he abandoned that, and then he went into the boy. Yeah, he does that, you know, doesn't he? It he kind was, of I found it extremely entertaining. Oh. I, lo I really laughed right through. That's right. That story is, it's a, I think it's the longest story in the book. It's the it perfection, is. you know, it the is. one with uh, yeah. the baseball. Yes. Is it also a theological disquisition? Of a well, what did you think? Mystical kind? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, when you've got I'm angels just... guiding your baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good yeah. stage. Because he was just too far-fetched. Yeah, I, I, see, it's interesting. It was like a field of dreams. Um, yes. It seemed far-fetched for yeah. what you're used to reading in the book, you know, but for, so, for some reason he chose in that story. I mean, I don't have any inside uh, stuff on it. He's, he's, he's a friend of mine, this uh, author. Is he? Yes. Uh, only through writing. Yes. We've, I've met him once personally, but we write. Uh, we've been I writing for years one. to each other. And he actually said that he'd come out to, to London, so I hope we'll be able to get him to speak oh, one time. Yeah, it would be very nice. I'll need some of you to be able to say that it's worthwhile coming to see him because I don't know. <laughs> but in any case, uh, I don't have insights into this particular, you know, into that particular story. But I, uh, knowing him, I, you know, I wonder if he allowed himself that place because the story being called perfection. You know, I mean, this this boy's search is a search as whether there's perfection in the universe. I mean, does, do things get tied? The loose ends get tied. Do, do yes. things end up balancing? You know this this analogy of the key system, right? The the, the locks and yes. this, yes. you know. 
So perhaps he allowed himself to bring some of that into the, the natural story, but it, the first time that I read it, it bothered me as well. Yeah, yeah it bothered me as well that he does that. But he's not, he's not uh, he doesn't hesitate. You know, dude, it's funny because he, he, he wrote this book called Winter's Tale, which is, it's his, it's his, you know, major piece. It's, and, um, and he writes about this flying horse in this story. And so the person's interviewing him and says, you know, you have this story of fantasy. And he says, it's not fantasy, it's fiction. Tolkien is fantasy. He said, you know, where you create these whole words. He goes, a flying horse is, is fiction. <laughs> so, you know, he had this very serious thing about it. But, um, but, but it is, into, you know, you, can, you see he has a certain level of humor, you know, in the things that he writes. I, when I first read that story, yeah. he can be verbose sometimes. I think it's a bit and too much. Yeah, but that and story, sometimes. Sometimes. it's a long it's, story. Yeah. It's too long. Yeah. It was, it, there was a lot of sort of, you felt that some of it was quite superb. Get on with it, yeah. you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, stop. And stop. there were sentences Explain that I felt with, all right, you know, we've got your, yeah. we've got we've your got point, you know, where it is. He does but like you? using a lot of words. He does. Fewer words. Yeah. Which, yeah. Is actually yeah. Yeah. Good, which is actually a bit aggravating. Sometimes. No, I yeah. thought I was <coughs> quite a bit of it because mm -hmm. it does felt. Well, in, in the much. first story, when he's describing Venice, yes. um, I thought... Mm. He can carry on with his descriptions because it was just so beautiful to just imagine you're walking around. But then he's actually <coughs> describing something as opposed yeah. to, um, you know, sort of yeah. adjectives. Developing a story. Oh. And, and that's interesting because I find that he ha there is a certain uh, knack that he has to describe scenes, you know, to describe. They almost come alive, you know, yeah. you can see the scenes very, very, very clearly. What are you saying? No, you're I'm just going to Virtually what you said, I was going to say he has an intense interest in places and contexts mm -hmm. and locations, mm -hmm. and he he, he supplies he supplies very very rich incidental detail. Yes, mm -hmm. and I wonder whether the perfection story would have had the impact that he wanted if the account of the baseball game had been shorter. Mm -hmm. In a sense, it was the sort of sustained, miraculous. You know, first he knocks off the other hand. And <laughs> Two thousand hits out of the <laughs> um, and may maybe if it had been condensed to a couple of pages about how wonderful the baseball game mm. was, it wouldn't have had that impact. It, that but it made me interested in baseball. I know nothing really? about baseball, uh, but, but I actually was quite enjoying the story. Mm -hmm. But what I found about that story was that in the middle of it, he puts down what he thinks about God and creation. Mm. Mm. And I mean, I wrote it down. I thought it, he says God is perfect. His creation is perfect. It doesn't seem so to us. We who suffer and die, we must live with sadness and terror, because we can't see it in its entirety. Entirety. If we could, we'd see that it's in perfect balance. Mm. And he's actually putting forward a, a big philosophical mm. idea mm. in the midst of all this mm. fantasy. So we'll use that to segue into into something that I wanted to discuss. You know, I'm interested to hear your points. That is his vision. I mean, I can t say it's definitely the way that he feels about things. But one of the reasons why I, l I became a, uh, you know, I enjoy his writing, even before I, I, I met him or I began to engage with him, is because he does this throughout. He almost was, you know, in, in a way that doesn't necessarily sound like preaching, he's in a story he brings, sometimes it's just in a few lines, like what he wrote about Venice. What he wrote about the waters. You know, how Venice has made peace with the waters. You know, you, you stop for a minute and you think, that's a very profound statement. You know, what he's saying over here, it's not just, you know, a, a poetic... Uh, there's something very meaningful about that, that, that impacts the way that we feel about life, the experience that we have with the world around it. So, he does that. Um, and you know, I, I kind of went through. I mean, do you, did you, do you, do you, do any of these stand out? Did you find that when you were reading that there would be a, a line here? So or yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Pacific. Yes. Mm. I thought his his link with nature. Mm. I did skip out some towards the end because mm. the baseball one just put me off. <laughs> right. mm, but I did read the Pacific, mm -hmm. and and his link there, her link, wanting to see that water mm. because there was just air and water between mm. them. Mm. I thought that was lovely. Mm. You could just see her sitting on the cliff top. Mm. Mm. But of course, he doesn't. He doesn't come home, and one of his, mm. one of his, it wouldn't be fair to say obsessions, but certainly one of the common elements in many of these is death, mm. Mm. and um, the perfection, if it is perfection, is achieved actually at the moment of death. Mm. 
um, in, in more than one case. Mm -hmm. One was expecting it. One was expecting these last few words right at the end of the story yes. just to be leading over it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how gently did he put it? Yes. 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 So yes. Yes. For me, in perfection. Was it, it wasn't her it miracle, was right? It wasn't. She was working. Yeah, well, was, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah, hers. But also, all the detail of what she was The miracle was, was not to be hers. Yeah. For me, in perfection, it was his um, absolute. Ambition, mm. for want of another word, to hold God accountable, mm -hmm. or to have this dialogue with God, so that I mm. guess He could put His demons mm. from the war to rest. Mm. And we don't think about holding God accountable, do we? Really, we um, may not say that we do all the time, somebody. you know. So you know yeah. Which okay, but the fact that there was a search to find it, and and I, you know, the interesting thing is because it's a child. In that story, mm. you feel very much that it is it is a in, it's an innocent search. It's not that he's got a bone to pick. It's a real innocent search. No, is this the nature of the world or isn't it? Is it something I that I can find? No. Isn't didn't he I've, not uh, yeah. know where his parents were? He, he saw them die. He saw them yeah, die. So it, it's almost him he was three years old. But he wants to bring them back. But do you have a sense that this child? This, well, he's 12 years old, isn't he? How old is he? 14. 14. 14. Do you have a sense that he is a an open-hearted individual or that he is a cynical individual? I think he's a very troubled individual. Well, that may be, but I'm saying is his outlook on the world one in where he's, uh, I don't want to say innocent, but where he's he's opened to the world. In other words, where he, he has he's willing to engage with the world, or is he cynical? In other words, does he have a cynical eye, a cynical approach to how it is that he engages? That seems to be a surprising dichotomy for mm -hmm. this boy. Um, and he seemed to me, maybe I didn't read the story carefully enough, mm -hmm. but he's, he's an assiduous, conscientious, mm -hmm. a student, mm -hmm. um, and he's carried away by, by, by uh, essentially his sort of mystical, his, his propensity to mm -hmm to embrace mystical ideas and 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 then he then he goes off to prepare himself for mm. the great uh, the great experience and yet there there are i'm asking that question because you know the house of ruth yeah. The lint chocolate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was funny. I mean yeah. you know, these, but these, these are <laughs> right right these are, but there are these opened there's a lack of presumptuousness in him. In other words, he, he, he opens himself to, to discover what's going on here. I find inconsistencies. I'm questioning it. Rather than cynical, bone-to-pick, grudge on, you know, block on the shoulder kind yes, of yes. approach. That's what, that's yes. what I mean. Is that you have a sense, I did anyway, you know, you have a sense in reading the story that this is the character. And his search is to find, or listen, he's, he's seen horrors. I don't know if the world is an unfair broken place or the world has some level of justice you know as everything works out you know and that that's the how i perceived anyway the search of this child not in where he he's coming out of the tor terrible experience of his childhood saying you know to hell with the world you know, for lack of a better term there, there that's it's a journey of his to try which astonishingly gets worked out in baseball but yeah so th did you have a favorite story in, 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 in all of it? The, Did one the, like the really? The telephone story was interesting. That was yes. an interesting yeah. one. The, the telephone story, oh. because you have this conflict between um, mod modern day, I would call it, you know, sort of advancement mm. of, and, and then this religious boy who was absolutely suspicious <laughs> of anything yeah. that was not from his world. Um, and 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 he was trying to hold fast to his mm. religion, and he saw everybody around him, or in this town, sort of uh, praying to the to the god of money, <laughs> and and losing losing their 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 roots. But then again, in that story, he's doing the same thing again. He's he's having fun with the the concept of the telephone and how harmful it is, and and all the things it does, and 
this extraordinary thing that they the people didn't have any children and that, yeah. that yeah. was Town so weird children. and I couldn't mm -hmm. really work out what had happened mm -hmm. and then in the middle of all that he, he gives another sermon mm -hmm. he starts saying um, can you boil water with the telephone will it warm you like a fire on a cold night uh, and all this kind of thing and um, so he's doing the two he's mm -hmm. he's having his little rant about telephones and how harmful they are and yet he's also wanting to get his other message across, mm. isn't he? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Are they both the same message? Um, <coughs> which story is the technology or God? It's called um, Jacob time. Bayer and the Telephone. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> you know, when he smashes that telephone. Yes. <laughs> Bring me a baby. <laughs> I just thought that was such a, you know, a, a creative way of, uh, of putting it out. But that story, like a lot of the others, had a very unclear ending. You know, it sort of ends up in the kind of Well, it's interesting because I found that the stories in this book all kind of taper off. Mm -hmm. There's no the end. And I wonder why he does that. Well, I, I uh, do you find that? I mean, did you find that in reading it? You never found yeah, that the story was like, oh at the end. There was not this resolution at the end where you kind of came... But it wasn't came meant to be. I think you actually have to come away with a feeling of slight incompleteness but understanding. Hmm. But then I was left curious about how did he reintegrate with perfection it, what he'd experienced hmm. and then how he went home hmm. and... See, it seems... But, these, but it's not only this story. I mean, many of the stories kind of end in a taper rather than in, in an abrupt ending where there's succinct resolution, you know. Uh, it's almost as though the music is dimming, you know, the music is, way, is you know, tapering. It's a short story. You can't really build up enough mm -hmm. in a short story mm -hmm. um, to get complete resolution. But, but, but you can have a short story that has an absolute punch bit at the end. Ending. But they with don't. his stories, that doesn't happen. Doesn't happen, yeah. Because life isn't like that. Yeah. Life doesn't have an, a, a happy ending yeah. all the time. Life doesn't have a tied up ending yeah. all the time. And I think it's because of that that I didn't feel frustrated at the end of the stories because I don't love yeah. stories that taper off. Mm -hmm. I kind of like endings, you know, personally, not because it should or shouldn't, I just mm. don't, you know, because yeah. you know, you're always left thinking about it otherwise. Yeah. But I, I think because of what you say, I felt less so, you know, because even when you're, thi the funny thing is, is that you're reading stories that could be about very simple things, you know, this, 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 the, the, the one with the actor, the Sidney Baldwin guy, yes. you know, okay, you, you got this woman who's, you know, is, uh, head over heels about this guy who was once famous for five minutes, and you know, he's saying, and suddenly the story drops into this depth. And you, this man is thinking about his life and what the Nazis are going to do, and you know, out of out of a, a, you know, a very sh shallow, you drop into this depth of a story, and it hits life in a really profound way, and so you can end, and it doesn't necessarily need to have this uh, succinct ending. That's you know me because at first I was like, oh, okay, he's doing one of those endings, and then it was another one of those endings, another one of those endings. And and th that's kind of what I felt, I am, what you just articulated. Isn't it partly because he goes into people and what they do hmm. in a very interesting way? Like, which was the one with the man who was um, prelude, the man who had a job at United States Steel. Hmm. And it turned out that this man had what was sort of a perfect job, and he was getting a very good salary for it. And then he was doing absolutely nothing. He was doing it in two hours. Hmm. And did he feel guilty about right. it or not? And I found that quite fascinating, that, that they, he was getting into the mind of, of, uh, of a worker and mm. what kind of job he was doing. And I think he does that with a lot of his, like mm. the one about um, Pas Pascandale, mm -hmm. the guy, the farm owner who was in love with the wife of the <laughs> neighbouring farm. You know, the, the sort of getting into the minds of mm. these people mm. was, I thought, very interesting. It's very interesting. It is right, but there's a humanity to it. Because with that story, I didn't find myself judging the man for some reason. Like, you might hear a story like that and say, you know. But there's a certain level of humanity. I don't know. I, I did anyway. I wonder how you felt. The diversity of these characters, right? We're reading so many different stories. But there's a level of connection. But you can only take so much at a time. I found mm. that I first read, started reading them, and I sort of read one after the other. Mm. And you've actually got to give yourself 
you've got to wait. You've got mm. to, you know, you've got to absorb mm. what you've mm. been reading. Otherwise, mm. it just gets too much. Mm. Say, oh, no, it's just too much. Mm. And there's too much dialogue, and mm. you know, I'm not relating to it. So mm. you actually have to stand back. Mm. And actually, I read a couple of them today that I sort of haven't mm. read for a while. And when mm. you actually read them individually and give each one of them space, mm. Mm. then they're much more meaningful. Yeah. I mean, I found this reconstruction, which was sort of gave lots of different messages. Mm. Um, and and over here, one one of this, it's one of the short ones, um, and it was this man who said, um, "I cannot change the fact, as I am the last one who remembers him being the father, that all he saw and learned and loved will have a second death when they die with me." Mm. And I found that very touching. Mm. Because it's a sort of the message is, you mustn't let the past die. You have, you've got to hand it down to the next mm. generation, otherwise it does die. Again. Mm. Mm. But it is there. There, it's almost as though you have to, you know, let let, let them sit. You, yeah, you have to you savor yeah. kind yes, of. Yes, yeah, no, you yeah, have yeah. to. Mm. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Mm. But the mm. story, um, a brilliant idea and his own about the spotter. That was for graphic, wasn't it? Well, that was, that oh, that when the seemed to me to be um, to be on a on a rewarded um, mm. because at the end at the end of the story the uh, um, he was he was going to be rescued mm. and he yeah, yeah. succeeded with mm. what he did and mm. in that way it was quite different mm. from that from, from the other stories because mm. it did have a climax he was in a terrible situation mm. and if 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 the uh, enemy had uh, prevailed, um, he would certainly have died. Mm. But the implication was clear that he didn't. Mm. He was mm. going to be rescued. Yeah. Helped to. So, in a way, mm. that story stands out for that reason mm. as being very different. Mm. Because it wasn't one but of the things about his characters that he's always that he pushing them to the limit. I mean, they're pushing themselves mm. either against the elements, the sea, or battle, mm. or what, whatever it is. Mm. They are um, really being pushed to the mm. limits. Mm. The first story, to me that story, you know, you see this woman, the way he describes this, this virtuoso uh, soprano, yeah. greatest soprano in the world, you know, she was a, the way he describes her weight and her, her, her how she <laughs> ate, and you know, so there's a, but there's this, the, the <coughs> expression, to me that's, that's like my Yom Kippur story. Personally, you know, I go to that as an analogy because, you know, Harambam, when he writes about atonement, he says, how do you know that when you have achieved rectification for a transgression or something? He says, when you find yourself in that place again, in the same circumstance, the same thing, and you choose not to, not for any ulterior motive, but because you see it as the right thing to do. And that, you know, that's this story. It's essentially a story of atonement, where he finds essentially her yes. in the same circumstance, the same, with the boyfriend who originally committed suicide because they drag, you know, the un imbalance between the two of them and so on. And he allows her to be the laundress, singing as she's hanging the laundry again, or, what, or you know, essentially in the, in the, in the, in the story. But you, you, you realize that even a person like that can reflect on what it is that he's done in his life. He becomes an impresario because of this yes. woman, you know, yes. <laughs> and whatever it is that she does. Yes. You know, that we can see these, you know, you could read that and say, you know, there's reflection. There's reflection in it. There's a sense of per personal connection on whatever level there is in it. And that it's almost as though you th read that story and think how lucky he was mm. that he had the opportunity to yes. find himself back almost full circle into a place and choose otherwise. And it was not an easy thing for him to do. Like, you see, he gives himself the space, he gives them the space. Yes. And it's, it's an unbelievable... But with the first book, who was so successful, and about whom he quite properly felt so, felt so guilty, um, he, he got himself on a treadmill, hadn't he? Mm. He was, uh, having started her off on her career, there were now endless demands on his work as an impresario and he couldn't stop so and, and if he'd stopped with her that would have done her no good at all that would just have less, left her floating in nothingness so as, and, as you said the opportunity 
start again mm. and do the whole thing quite differently and do it the way it should have been done or not mm. do it the way it should mm. not have been done. So it's like the greatest it, grace. Yes. Was it the way it shouldn't have been done? He mm. was thinking surely, sure. he was thinking a lot of himself rather than the girl. Because he saw her future. Well, he knows yes, her future. He knew her long-term future, mm. but perhaps not her short-term future, but because she could have had success. And did he deny her that? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 when I'm reading it, I think, you know, it's almost as though he was able to see the end of yes. this woman's life. She's got this, if for nothing else, the boyfriend, the boyfriend, you know, she's got this boyfriend who clearly is not going to be able to manage, you know, the last one committed suicide, you know, because he wasn't able to manage the, the situation. And where there are very few alternate trajectories that this particular, you know, so what I think maybe I would have done in his position would say, well, I'll do it better this time. And that's a much riskier. <laughs> so that's you know you convince but yourself but that. You but didn't he give her the choice? Yes, he did. He did give her the choice. He gave her the choice. He gave her the choice, but he explained but we to be the two the sides, boyfriend. the two sides of the dilemma to her. Exactly. And and gave her the choice. Yes. And it wasn't. It wasn't clear that if she'd chosen the career, that would have been that that would have been wrong in some sense because mm. maybe she would have valued the career more highly. And that wouldn't have uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't have achieved his atonement, mm. um, but maybe it would have been what she wanted. Yeah. You know, there's um, this this uh, this quote that you read, Judy, about the you know how the world finds itself into its perfection that all mm -hmm. of the day. So you know, I I just did a select few that you know interesting. He, he what he what I think he does, he brings that into the everyday occurrences. So you'll be reading a very regular story and all of a sudden you get, like on this, in the story of the, the, you know, the, the builder who, who, who reconstructed. The 9-11. Oh, right, the 9 yes, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Honor. I often go into things, almost, I almost always go into things, he says, with no calculation but for honor, mm -hmm. which I find far more attractive and alluring and satisfying in every way than winning. I find it deeply, incomparably satisfying. Just a line like that, you know, you see that this man is living on something beyond the the everyday, the brilliant idea, you know, this guy, the, the, the good drop. He believed that the greatness of a city, <coughs> that's how he's describing a city, the greatness of a city is a condition of mood. It's first prerequisite that one is able to lose oneself in a seemingly infinite vastness that protects it from the flow of time. So it's, there's a level of eternity in a great city, he's saying. Yeah, He believed that time dashes off a great city like rain from a glass dome. Yes. <laughs> How great, yeah, you know. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But he also mentioned that, um, that it's easier to have honor than love, or honor is longer sustained right. than love, which is actually quite... Quite a good line yeah. as well. <laughs> and she was silent. Right? Yes, so yeah, she was absolutely. silent. Right. She didn't know how to answer <laughs> that one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or this one with Balbion, you know, with the, the actor. Oh, I change. My acts are never the same, but the core remains, the heart of the matter. That never changes. The world bribes you, threatens you, cajoles you. It wants you to betray your affections and your loyalties. I won't. And so these lines that run through, if I were to say the theme, I don't know, you know, I mean, there, it's about many things. I mean, this, the, these stories are about many things. It's, it's memory, it's honor, it's, it's, it's loyalty, it's loss of a child. It's, 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 I mean, it's, it's many things. But there's, throughout, it's, it's as though he has this very powerful sense of a real eternity. Not a, you know, uh, angel with a harp eternity, but that there's, there's an extant reality that, you know, that as he says, we can't perceive because we're within it, but we find the flashes of it, we find the, the implications of it, intimations of it in the everyday, in the everyday situations. That, and that to me, perspective, you know, when I read this from a Torah perspective. Mm. Huh? Yeah. Well, it is, but it's wonderful for everyone yes. because yes. the beauty yes. is, is that mm. is when you can see that you can resonate with this, not on a religious yes. level, yeah. but on a human experience on a level of human experience that the things that are written about here you can either cynically laugh at yeah. which happens 
you know, people will cynically laugh at these stories. You know, people, you can imagine that people will read a Halpern yeah. story and just say, oh man, this man is, you know, he's delusional, yeah. you know. Or if you, you recognize, if you allow yourself to identify what it is that he's, he's describing from your own experience, there's a sense of what we might call in Torah Olam Abba, right? Whereas Ol- Olam Abba, meaning the world time, whereas the Rambam yeah. writes beautifully, he says, oh, we don't call Olam Haba the world to come because it isn't there yet, or it doesn't exist. He says, Ela kayam ve'omedhu. It exists. It is. As it is. And the only reason we say to come is because our experience of it is temporal, personally. But it is part of the nature of the way that the universe is, the way the world is, that there is, there is a level of being that impacts the level of becoming on, on a certain level. And you know, it's those things that that I think are our challenge today. It's those elements to be able to express in a meaningful way. You know, it's where is where does he say uh, uh, one of the points that he made uh, here? And it's in the first story. He says, for example, he said, "I think we're in a lost age, in which holiness and charity have been traded for the victory and penetration of knowledge." You know, I read that line. I said, "That's." That's today. Where he says, through though all the knowledge in the world has not brought us any further than we are than we can go without it, even in the outermost halls of grace, I believe that more is to be known and apprehended from the beauty of a face than in delving no matter how deep simply into how things work, no matter how marvelous that may be. The greatest substance of the world is immaterial, the province of the heart, and its study cannot be forced to reason. That is contemptuous. It's just a contemptuous statement in any uh, arena of intellect or, ac- or, or academia. It's, it may be welcomed in certain circumstances if you're deciding to talk about poetry and so on and so forth, but to be able to say it with conviction and say that the, the elements of the heart, the, the perceptions that we have of honor and love and, and these things, that these are the most real, not the least, is... is it's not... A, it's not I'll, I'll allow myself to say it's not a safe thing to say today, in many many circles. Do you, do you, do you find that, or do you? I mean, are, I personally exp- feel that way because I feel that when I speak with a younger audience, I have to be very careful, almost not to speak the way that Helpern speaks. You know, he doesn't care. He just this is his oh. life, and I know this is the way that he feels. I mean, he he just, and he's not. Oh. Yeah, but he's at the same time. I mean, it's not as though he's far into to the world of of intellect. Right, he's not. He he may not call himself an intellectual, but he's very comfortable, you know, in, in the university halls. He was educated at some of the best universities in, in you know in the world. But, but I find myself having to be careful in in terms of expressing these ideas as though they are matter of fact, because it, it, with younger uh, with a younger audience, it's very contemptuous. But he also has um, a wish to sort of bring other people into his moral ideas. Yeah. It's like with the, the Monday, the Fitch, mm. and the, the woman who'd lost her husband in 9-11, mm. and he decides to do the whole apartment up mm. and not charge her. He gets all the workmen doing it for nothing. <laughs> you're and not he gets and, and, mm. and it's an emotional, but it's an emotional, you know, sort of reaction to a situation that's as devastating. As it so. was, but but he he wants to get other people doing mm. good things mm. as well. That that seemed why. Well, when I read that story, I felt that it was beyond doing good things. There was almost this this yeah. sense of higher purpose yeah. yes. 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 that permeated the yes. you know yes. it's how you would want a minyan to feel and it wasn't no you would want for people to come to a minyan yeah. and you would yes. want for there to be a collective yes. feeling of yes. you know which your eyes and eyes and this yes. served and I think actually you know I realized I think he says this that this guy Finch never didn't go to mass since no. it shifted oh. from but this was, but, this was yeah. but it was the yeah. same thing in the baseball story as well mm-hmm when he was talking to the baseball players yeah, and he got them into his realm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. He brings them yes. into this space. They, they, yes. Interesting. They take him seriously uh, the yeah. way that uh, Dawkins mm. 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 <laughs> Unless you could get him into that realm, although he would kick and scream not to get there. That's a very interesting yes. point. Yes. That you can, oh. you can bring someone into it by showing yes. rather than debating or, or explaining. It's, it's also to do with your instinct, your instinctive mm. reaction to something. Mm. 
That's a very interesting point. I didn't think but of it. He, he's also interested in how people change. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the one I found almost most fascinating was this Van der Veer's house. Oh, man I was like, oh my God. Yeah. The description of the house was You know, he was uh, <laughs> obsessional yeah. and away because she couldn't she take can it handle anymore, it yeah. because the house was perfect and the garden was perfect and everything had to be perfect mm. and then she went mm. and he's left mm. and looking around his wonderful garden mm. and everything is perfect and then he sees this fire from somewhere over there and then he suddenly realizes it's his house on fire and suddenly he thinks right i'm gonna let it go he's free and, you know, <laughs> house is gone. Free. all these things yes. all that perfection it's all gone yes. And then you're led to believe maybe she'll come back now. But he was restricted by, he was restricted. I mean, he restricted himself because of his perfection. Yeah. But I love that story because I think there's something a lot of people have sort of. How um, interesting. Uh, I thought you, that would be the story like that would make everyone just mad. <laughs> you know, like, well, but I, I hear yeah. what you're saying in it. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. But it, it, but it kind of frustrated me. The whole story kind of frustrated me. But I, yeah. I, I just liked the description of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Because you felt yeah. like, wow, that's a great... <laughs> 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 Which story is that? It's called it's Van, Van Der Beer's house. It's yes. almost losing... Once you've got rid of the physical, then mm. you have a life. You're liberated again. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the question I'm, I'm of possessions is, do you possess yeah. them? Do you or do they possess you? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. They possessed him. Mm -hmm. yes. I actually knew the somebody story. who had wonderful, wonderful thing. artwork in her house. And um, she was a colleague of mine on a work thing. And the subject arose about whether she ever went away. And she said, no, I can't. Yeah. So I said, why not? She said, I can't because of the art. I can't leave it ever because I'm worried about it. You know, it may wow. be insured, it may be not insured. I cannot leave the house. Wow. And so her art had sort of consumed her because she couldn't have a life. Oh my. Because of that. That's and it, wow. And it it's the same with him, really. That Absolutely. Oh, so. could, could I ask you, when you were quoting Rambar, mm. um, is the interpretation that you can enter the Olam Haba while you're still alive in this Absolutely. world. Absolutely. That is, that, is that is the significance. Absolutely. As a matter of fact. If you're like Roger, if you're like Roger, the baseball player, you do. Exactly. Yes. As a matter so of fact, there is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So go ahead. And, and do you think that that was in Ram Bam's mind? I do. Because there is a, there is a line in the Talmud, mm -hmm. in Birachot, Daf Yud Zayn. It says that when the students of um, of the yeshiva of one of the rabbis yeshivot would leave for intercession you know they would go off for for a holiday they would bless each other and it records what was customary to say to each other which is one of the most beautiful blessings that i've ever read you know i won't go through the entire thing for you but the opening line of it was olam which means may you see your world in your lifetime and may your end be in Ola, in Ola Ramba. And what that, what I always understood that to mean, I think that this is what the Rambam is pointing out, is that may you live a life in where you s experience your world from that perspective, where that's where you enter into that space, so that you walk in this world and you see things from a different lens than others might might end up seeing it. What what he what he says similar to that is when he talks about a prophet. Uh, the, my mother so let's say, what is a prophet? He says, a prophet, a prophet sees the... Inter First of all, he says that a, that a prophet has full control over the drives, over his own or her own drives. So it's a, a prophet could be a male or female. Or um, and he says that, that a prophet works in, in his or her life to achieve mastery. I actually happen to be writing about this this week, so... You know, really, but to achieve mastery over one's drive so where where I'm driving rather than driving me and he says and he walks among people in the world but he's he realizes Vuroe, he says he realizes that he's in a different place than everyone else even though he shares the physical space but he's in a different space yeah and um, and I think that that's part of what he does here if, the, if, if there's one element of a theme that kind of goes through you know that that in all of his stories there's it's bringing you into that 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 place, that space, so that the, these things have meaning on a level where, on a mundane, if it was purely on a mundane scale, Balbion wouldn't be saying the things that he's saying, 
the the impresario wouldn't be you know second he would you know thinking again about what it is that I might do to this woman and what it might do to me. This child you know wouldn't be able to bring a, a, a baseball stadium into you know and so on, and 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 it questions that that issue in humanity. In other words, what he says about a city that there can be an emergent phenomenon. He's not saying, uh, he's saying this is the, the definition of a great city. That a city should have an emergent phenomenon where the life itself that inhabits it gives way to the, great, to the greatness of life and existence to manifest in this place because it's so complex and so interactive that you can't manipulate it, right? That it allows, a city allows for life to be able to express itself in pleasure. It's a great city. Yeah. So where time bounces off it, and where you emerge into a space of eternity and where you can sense the, the implications of it. And that's so much part of how it is that we see Torah. Because when we say, Torah min hashamayim, it's one of the 13 principles, right? When it says Torah min hashamayim, I always, you know, point out that it doesn't say Torah min Elohim, that Torah is from God. It says Torah min hashamayim. And what it's saying is not that Torah is from God. That statement is not saying that the Torah comes from God. That statement is saying that the Torah comes from a different plane. That it's speaking to us from a different space. There's a Shamaim space and there's an Aretz space. And Torah is speaking from Shamaim to Aretz, as opposed to completely within Aretz. It's another thing to say that comes from God. That's fine. But the point of Torah Mina Shamaim is not that point. <laughs> it's the point of there's a different level of reality that Torah is communicating from. And yeah. In the Pacific one, there was quite a feeling of spirituality. There. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. The water. In the, in the Pacific, mm. there was a feeling of spirituality. There. He does a lot with water in these stories, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah yes. there's a lot with water in these stories. Mm. Mm. The Mar Nueva. Oh, yes. That was a difficult story. Which one? The one with the the boy describing his the 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 beach house and the and the. The, over, the, the, dictator. the dictator was his next door neighbor, and oh, yeah. that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. That was a very interesting story. Yeah, the, st the narrator of the story and the central character was the boy, yeah. but of course the, the bearer of the honor was, 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 was the yeah. older sister, mm. who not only lost her own life, mm. she committed suicide, mm. but she also brought ruin on the whole family, mm. which is. Another mm. aspect of mm. 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 Like a shot in the dark, though. You know, I mean, she refuses to, to stand down. Yes, oh yes, yes. And she had a few opportunities. He even gives her the opportunity to stand down. Yes. The dictator, you know, he's yes. it. And she, okay. she doesn't stand down. In a way, I felt it was a shame that was only a short story. Mm. Because that could have been developed. Mm. I, I got the feeling that a few of them they were almost mm. too short you couldn't get yourself mm. into the store well they're tastes yeah. mm. it's like you know you have a tray of chocolates yes. you know you, you, you're not having a meal on it you're tasting here and there <laughs> they're tastes it's true you, you'd love to hear the, the, the rest of it I, I hear maybe it's yeah. now worth trying again Freddie and Frederica you I, just before I could well I say before. either that or Winter's Tale Winter's Tale is 700 pages that's the if you've been to my house you know the um the the picture that I have in the dining room of it's a skyline of, of Manhattan. I don't know if you remember it, it's in my head. But if you look very carefully there were it's made up of words. It's oh, yeah. it's Winter's Tale. That that that, that, oh. that oh, the really? picture is a picture of Winter's Tale. Uh but it's it's one it's a beautiful book. But it it's you gotta just get in and go for the journey. He'll take you on a journey. I mean he'll take you and there's several threads of a story and so on, but that the Manueva, you know, he writes over there this line. He says, "And now that I'm older, neither delight nor sorrow come as easily as they used to." Oh yes, I, I read that as well. Yes, yes, yes. yes that's yes. really saying something about when you're older. Yeah, it's interesting because there's this issue with it throughout Torah, and where we talk about Zaken, where Avraham. It's funny because in in. Uh, it talks about Avraham's life, and the Haftarah has the same thing, where it says, Avraham zaken ba bayamim. Avraham was old, he had come of days. And the Haftarah begins with exactly the same words for David HaMelech. Ve'amelech David zaken ba bayamim. And both of them are dealing with this issue, and where they've reached a point in their life 
where they are seeing life in terms of this panorama rather than the interactive, everyday, responsive elements. And what happens to both of them is they are dragged back into it so that they, as long as they're here, they shouldn't completely be removed from this. So, you know, you have Isaac bringing him back or he, he gets married again at this point in his life. He has six more children. Yeah. And the, t the, the midrash on that is that Isaac insisted that he get married again because he was re re removing himself from sorrow. And David has the same thing. You know, he's basically, his whole kingdom is, is, is running away from right out from under him. And, you know, his Bathsheba, you know, brings him back and Natan the Navi and, you know, your kingdom, you have to respond and your son. And, to, and he's, you know, he's brought right back into this. And you know, I had this experience. I, I, I wrote a book on the laws of Brachot. I was commissioned by uh, one of the older um, men of the Syrian community who was, you know, he's one of, he was recognized one of the patriarchs of the community. He was in his 90s when he asked me to write this book. And I worked with him during the day. And I remember very keenly that somebody came into him and said, you know, so-and-so passed away. And his response was, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I remember the first time that I heard that somebody that I knew passed away. Right? I was maybe uh, nine, ten years old. I mean, you know, th this is what person that I spoke to. I, I knew. I touched her hand. I, you know, I mean, and I realized, you know, this, there's this, there's this thing in life. You know, we, we, it's a journey. And as we carry on in the journey, the panorama of it becomes the almost the nature of our experience of it. You know, it's it's we we live in this this place and where we see the entirety and those those initial or not the initial but the immediate local elements don't have as great of an impact but they, it doesn't have to necessarily be that way no, it just takes a little bit of effort to to you know. I just thought that was a very That's interesting one of one of this, what they say that, that it's very important for older people to actually have contact with young people mm, mm. because that actually sort of brings them mm. into into life again as opposed to that is. doing exactly what you were saying sort mm. of just feeling as though they're Sort of wandering out. There's this beautiful line in Proverbs in Mishle. It says, "Ateret zekenim b'nebani." The crown of the elders are their grandchildren, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and tiferet bani mavotam. And the, but the splendor of the children is there, are their yes, lives. You know, so there's this. You've seen yeah. that at the Friendship Club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is at the Friendship Club. Mm -hmm. yes. There's this block. You say someone's passed away, and the 94-year-old that I bring. Lucy Dweck, she's phenomenal. Mm. She just doesn't want to know. She blocks it out. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. Right. I, <laughs> life, yeah. right. I get on with my life. What are you going to do? And it comes to life when the children of the school come. Mm. It, it just mm. lifts them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So you wonder if that, if that experience, you know, Jung wrote, wrote, wrote a lot about this, Carl Jung. He wrote about this, this experience of, you know, where you have this entirety of life. And whenever you come into that, you kind of just feel that it's all this harmony, you know, kind of what he's writing about, this level of where the world finds itself. Whenever you tap into that place, those visceral elements don't hold the same impact. Mm -hmm. You know, and the question is, you can live in that space, and if you really do live in that space, you certain, you, to a certain degree, you lose those very visceral, responsive elements of life. And, the, and, and I wonder how much the question is the balance, of being able to maintain that interaction and mean, you know, responsiveness to it, and still being able to maintain a sense of the entirety. Yeah, because in youth it's the opposite, isn't it? There's very little perspective, context. But as, know, as we get older, context. don't we all want to go back to the intensity we felt when we were younger? Right. For example, everybody's always saying, "Oh, it never tastes the same as it used to when mm. I was young," mm -hmm. and that's absolutely true because mm. your taste buds are better <laughs> when you're young. And it, 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 all sorts of things, yeah. but. We also want to go back to that feeling mm. intensely happy, mm. and I mean mm. the excitement that you feel as a child when you've got a birthday or an outing, mm. and then when you get older, another present. I don't need anything. Right. And, you know, yeah. you you lose the excitement of life, yeah. and but so you really do want to go back and try and capture yeah. it again. But the question is, do you have to? And would would one be willing to compromise the other end of it? The perspective of the life lived in order to be able to have that, and is it necessary? In other words, is there is there somewhat of a duality that a person can have? I, I don't. So one, yeah, one, one, one uh, metaphor. Uh, 
refers to it as if you think of your life as being like a building. So when, when you're a child, you're laying the foundations and it's busy, 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 and the walls are going up, and the windows are going in, and the doors are going in. Mm. But when, when you get to the end, you're the architect and the builder are standing back and looking at it and think, all it needs now is the door plate, which I shall now fix on. And this is the, the, day, of, the day of your death, which is yeah. better than the day of your <laughs> Yom HaMavet Mi Yom Hivaledor Well, I thank everyone for uh, your input thank you. Thank you. and thank for you. the thoughts I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed it I often find out after this I want to reread and having listened to everyone else's perspective it's, it's fun. sometimes I think I read too quickly well, it's the time, you know, it's not easy to, I mean, for me. It is very but, um, hard to go from one story to another at the same time. So I haven't read all of Black Swan. I will be reading it also partially. Uh, anyway. uh, so I, shall we do Black Swan and we'll take, we'll do the extra time for it? Is that all right? Is everyone all right with that? the May one. Yes, the May one will not be. We'll meet in June. We'll find. I, I hope that we can find a date where you'll be around. You can always log online. Well, yeah. going on so, yeah. the last one being last story here? What do you mean? Last no, one? so we're going to the next book that yeah. we're going to do is a non fiction book called Black Swan. Black Swan, right? I read that many years ago. I don't know well, if it's that long know. ago no, because it may no, be a different no, black swan. This no, is this is not such an old book. Black Swan. Yes, as I see it now, it should be if we. When's the 11th? Um, the 11th of June Thursday. is a Thursday. Okay. I won't be here. Anyway. It's the day you're leaving. Yeah, it's not good for me, yeah. If we do it a day earlier, is that better for you? I don't know. I, the only reason I'm the only reason I'm doing it Thursday is because I have these classes on Wednesday and Tuesday, and it'll be on. Well, you can't do two things. You can't have a class. And right. And Unless you wanted to do it at nine o'clock. I don't know if that's too late. Let me take a quick look. That is the eighth. It's it's by Nisim. It's his real name is Nasim Talib. Talib T A L E B. T T A L E B. Not Nasim Nicholas Taylor. Not that one. That's the same. That's him. If it is, if the eighth is better for everyone, and you'll be around, then I'll, I, we can do it on the eighth. The eighth. It's, uh, it's a Monday. So I apologize from now. I won't be here. That's all right. Well, I hear. Well, let's. Uh, I just have to know if it went out in the news yeah. already. Uh, then I'd rather not change it a, a, a third As time. No, no. It had, um, uh, Edward was saying it's, it's, in, in, it's in here. Here for May, isn't the it? May one, it's, the May is in here, not the June one. Oh. And yeah. doesn't it have a name of the book in it as well? No. August, June. Which was the date of May? And you're right not to change it again. Yes. I don't want to change it again. So if he's already sent it out, then yeah. you'll yeah. forgive yeah. me. Yeah. Of course. All right. Uh, hold, hold on. You're saying that it's... It's down for the 20th of May. Well, right. But Without it's possible that... He put the news out because I discussed it with him today, and I said, "Let's do it the eleventh." No, and it's possible that it went out in the news already. I, I proofread the news, and I'm pretty sure it's not. Okay, if if it hasn't already gone out public this for the eleventh, then we can adjust it to the eighth. This that's this that's, that's all right. We'll, that we'll do with it. the email went out the other day with the date of the twentieth, just to the people who are in. The yeah, but I'm okay to put it out once no, and say it's been adjusted. But if it's oh, already yes, gone out yeah, and said yeah, that it's no, been no, adjusted, I'm not I adjusting it again. All right, so we'll let everyone know. We'll let everyone know. For, the, for now... So we want to know how quickly you have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if... if w I wouldn't do it for three weeks. No. We can't do the Black yeah. Swan in three yeah. weeks. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Unless we say... Unless we, well, uh, let's, let's just put this on the table for a minute. Just yeah. on the table for one minute. Um, um, Sandra. Hello. Let's say... Let's say, if we haven't put it out publicly yet that I wanted to change the thing. We will read the Black Swan. If we don't read it now, is that an issue? If we take the three weeks 
And we do it on May 20th. And we read Man's Search for Meaning instead, which is considerably shorter than the Black Swan. Are you all right with that, or, or is it... I'll go with the majority. You'll go with the majority. So maybe we should just say that and keep it the date that it is? Are we all right with that? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Victor Frankel. F-R-A-N-K-L. This is a book I believe every every Jewish person should read once in their life. I think every person should, but I th it's just really... It's one of those, you know... There are so many. There are. What to do? We have to live for all. Frankel. Victor also, he spells with a K. But it's it's a shorter book. What's it called? Man's Search for Meaning. Philosophical. It's not as philosophical as you mm -hmm. think. It's definitely philosophical, but not as philosophical as you think. It's, it, it, I told you, the first part of the book is his is simply his account of his experience in the camps. That's uh, so, so but it's not where you're reading it and you can't go on every after when you finish page. He does it in a way where you... So, um, Edward will have to put out another E because the email Yeah, they even said black swan. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but I think it, was it a general one or was it was it spin? It was a general. Let me look at the news now. I mean, look at the news. It was a general. This you should be able to get on Amazon. No, no, easily. no. We were discussing. Oh. I I would have liked the physical book. Yeah, yeah I don't use physical book. I have the physical book. It was only for Shabbat, but I. I make my notes in the, in my uh, iPad. Everything's on my iPad, yes, and it's so easy. Going backwards and forwards is harder on the iPad. Shabbat is the best day to curl up and read a book. All right, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you do what's you know comfortable for you. Um, I just want to take a look at the the news. Edward's email. I'm looking at the news today, now. Today, yesterday, today talked about the black swan. What date? For twentieth of May. But it says twentieth of May. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It's only the book group, isn't it? I think well, then the question is, what do you think is better? Is it better to change the date and keep the book, or change the book and keep the date? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, how many it's us. I mean, you know, it's essentially yeah, us. We're the ones that are yeah, doing it, right? Us. I mean, how many people? Maybe it'll be a few extra. Yeah. Who, who, who might come, Rosie? I mean, Barbara when she comes back, presumably. Yes. What's the vote? Keep the book. Yeah. Change the date. Oh. Change the date. Keep the book. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Everyone agrees? Yeah. yeah. For the May the 20th. Yes. Yeah, All right. Lovely. Yeah, okay. I want to say again, I this is so much fun for me. I, lo I hope you enjoy it, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Makes us read. Yeah. Makes me read. So when are we going to do Black Swan then? We'll do that the next nonfiction book. Okay. So it may be over summer. Okay. No? Yeah. <laughs> she sounds like a devastating. Were you like setting up serious things uh, to read this? I was gonna. No. You're gonna really get I into it. Yeah, I was, but it's Are okay. You You'll forgive me. <laughs> you forgive me. I thought I could get points as well for my CPD. You'll get it. Uh, was it continuous? Yeah, that one. Why you can't do it when you read it later, or it's yeah, only now? Yeah, probably. All right, you'll do it. <laughs> So the next appointment, just the next one, is the 20th of May, May. for the yes. Man's yes. Search for Meaning. Yes. yes. That is it. That I can remember that. There you go. The rest I can't remember. There you go. How do I, uh, I don't know how to stop streaming. It tells me to stop streaming. Oh, here we go. I got it.